Why do you need a cell phone tower on the moon? Uh, why do you need a cell phone on the moon? The reality is, is that the systems that we typically use in aerospace have a very low amount of data that you can send back and forth between a spacecraft and the Earth or a spacecraft and another spacecraft. LTE offers a different technology that did not exist in that marketplace. And so this test for us allows us to get a much higher bandwidth of data. Our goal is to deliver a fully integrated, very compact LTE network that has multiple parts to it. There is a part that is the base station and core network functionality that's integrated in a very small, compact form factor that will go on the lunar lander that Intuitive Machines, our partner for this mission, is building. And uh, so our LTE network equipment will go on the lunar lander. If you look at some of the extreme industrial environments, whether it's mining operations, or you think about offshore drilling platforms, I think in any of these harsh environments where you're remote and the equipment has to operate in very different environmental conditions, whether it's temperature, humidity, dust, exposure to all kinds of environmental particles and so forth, I think mining, offshore drilling, um, very remote areas, I think that's where probably the equipment is most applicable and also environments where your space and size constraint. If we can solve problems to put a network on the moon. Hi, welcome back to Market Conversations. Today is February 21. And I just want to do a quick video update on Nokia, as well as my trades on Nokia. So if you guys are interested in watching, go ahead and stick around. But before I continue, I just want to let you know that I am not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment purposes only. I also started a Patreon page where like-minded people can get together and talk anything and everything about stocks, cryptocurrency options, selling options, anything that can help grow our accounts. And I am only taking a limited amount of people just so I can focus my attention on them. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check out my link down below. So that video you saw, Nokia is going to the moon. They are going to deploy the first LTE network in space to test lunar surface communications for future applications. Nokia is down again today. It's been down more than a week now, but that's okay. This is the time to actually buy at the pullback. So there's some good news that was announced today. Nokia extends partnership with mobile operator company A1 Telecom Austria for 5G coverage across Austria in a multi-year contract, including the supply of 5G radio access and core network services. The development of products and services is in progress with the core elements expected by the first half of 2021. Nokia will supply A1 airscale base stations and Nokia airscale radio access products. A1 will also launch 4G and 5G networks slicing commercially following a successful pilot. Nokia has a long-lasting partnership with A1, including the successful extension of 3G and 4G mobile networks and the launch of Austria's largest fiber optic network. Both companies have also successfully organized multiple private wireless campus networks in Austria, including installations at Vienna airports and 5G playground Carinia. We take a look at this black rock filed in SC13GA form with the Securities and Exchange Commission disclosing ownership of 333 million shares of Nokia Corporation. This represents 5.9% ownership of the company. In their previous filing, dated 2020, February 5th, BlackRock had reported only 311 million shares, indicating an increase of 6.78%. Institutions are buying Nokia stocks at a very low price. Let's take a look at the one month chart here. So Nokia has just been flats for the past week it went to a high of 979 
back on January 27th, and this was a squeeze all the way to 979. We can see the gray bar, it has a lot of volume and it's been slowly just decreasing. I think a lot of people have moved on from Nokia, but I know there's still people holding on to Nokia. So this is definitely a long-term hold. We're not gonna see $9 for a while, but it's definitely a time to hold and forget about it. As you can see, I have 100 shares at 650. Strongly believe Nokia has a lot of growth potential. They are a leading 5G company and 5G is going to be huge this year and the upcoming years. And let's take a look at my orders. I do have a lot of leap calls, 40 leap calls at the five strike price. And expires 2023. I have 40 leap calls of the seven strike price that expires in 2023. So two years from now, I would hope that Nokia is at least $10, if not more. Even before the squeeze happened here, Nokia was below 450. We are back at the price where it was trading before the whole fiasco happened. So if you guys are holding at a higher price than what it is now, I would consider buying more shares just to lower your cost average if you don't need the cash but always conduct your own research before buying any type of securities if it continues to drop i will go ahead and add on more leap calls and thank you so much for watching if you got this far please don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below if you're bullish on nokia and also do consider the patreon page thanks so much Hi there, if you are interested in helping out the channel, you can sign up for Weeble if you haven't already. They are currently offering two free stocks now. It used to be four, so you don't want to wait until it gets to one free stock or no stocks at all. So you get one free stock when you open up a Weeble account. And when you deposit $100 or more, you get one more free stock which is valued between $8 and $1,600. And if you are transferring from another brokerage, they will reimburse you the fees up to $100. And you will also receive a complimentary three-month subscription to Level 2 Events NASDAQ Total View from the day you sign up. So guys, what are you waiting for? Two free stocks are waiting for you. Thanks again.